From World War II to the present day, there are approximately 88,000 people that are still unaccounted for. We're standing on the lab floor of the Central Identification Lab here at JPAC in Hawaii. The, on the tables you see in front of you are the various cases we're working on currently. Basically, our job is to, uh, is to account for the MIAs and, uh, from all past uh, military conflicts that we have. That's our underlying mission. Uh, right now, I'm working on a case that came from Southeast Asia. Um, I am sorting through the teeth. That's, that's the bulk of the remains from this particular case were made up of teeth. Once again, teeth being the hardest substance in the body, that's not, that's not an uncommon finding. And I'm sorting through the teeth and the fragments that I have in order to determine exactly which teeth I have present and to figure out what teeth may belong to which individual. If there's a suspected crash site, uh, you might get a report from maybe a villager in one of the other countries might say, hey, uh, we're tilling a field and we found a part of an airplane. Or we might suspect that a, a helicopter went down in a certain part of the country. Um, and what we'll do is we have teams that we'll, we'll assign and that we'll send out to excavate and look for them. So the teams will go out and they will excavate it with the uh, host nationals helping them out. And whatever they collect and find, they will uh, send it to Hawaii in a ceremony. And after it's repatriated to, the, uh, to Hawaii, it's given a ceremony under the Joint Command. And then the items are taken to our laboratory where we will um, label it, photograph it, and then the analysis will begin. They'll lay out the skeleton, they'll arrange it, and they'll determine how many individuals are, are present. After they've built up their biological profile, there's an odontologist that's working in conjunction with the case many times. Well, we need dentists. Uh, uh, the main reason is uh, when you look at uh, some of the body, uh, some of the remains that we have, uh, skeletal remains, why uh, a lot of times they will disintegrate over time, and teeth are the naturally is, is, teeth are the hardest natural substance found in the body, the enamel is. And dental is, is similar to a fingerprint, I like to say, because uh, when you look at 32 teeth and there's five restorable surfaces, uh, when you take that exponentially, you're up into the millions of different combinations you have. And that doesn't take into account if a tooth is missing. It doesn't take into account the type of materials that are used, or if a tooth has had a root canal fill, or if there's something else that was done to the tooth that can add even more of a uh, of um, something that makes it very unique to aid in the identification. What's critical for us is we have to have an idea of who it is and we have to have access to the individual's antemortem record. Um, there we will develop, we'll, we'll chart out uh, the person's antemortem uh, condition, that is what restorations a, p a person had prior to, to death, what uh, teeth are missing, what teeth are present, what type of restorations, uh, just like you would chart on a, on a living person but we reconstruct re, uh, it from the record itself. Then we go and we look at the uh, remains and just like you would do a dental exam on a living person, you chart the remains that are present, any abnormalities or, or pathology, if there's decay, you chart that as well. Teeth that are missing, you mark that. They're photographed and their um, images are also taken. Uh, digital radi radiography is used uh, to develop images. And then you sit down and you compare what the antemortem record indicates in, in the postmortem remains. And what we do is we go through a series of, of algorithms. What I have here is a photograph that I made of the uh, remains of, that I positioned such that I had a, as though I was looking in the person's mouth. If uh, you have a radiograph that shows a tooth missing, and yet on the postmortem remains a tooth is magically there, well that will rule out that individual. So essentially we go through algorithm, algorithms where we rule out individuals. And then if, uh, if we have uh, matches on the uh, restorations, then we're, we're pretty sure that that, that is individual. So I know, already know that there are uh, five people on board this aircraft. After we compile our report, uh, we're just one report amongst many. The anthropologists compile report, we compile report, that everybody has a different, uh, different job and a uh, different part of the, uh, the puzzle, so to speak. Uh, but the end product is to, uh, is to account for all the people that are missing. That's the ultimate uh, goal that every team is doing, whether you're doing research in a library, whether you're looking at skeletal remains or dental remains, or whether you're out in the middle of the jungle um, 
in 100 degree weather digging around on the, in the soil trying to account for information. Everybody is working for the same goal.